Spring has finally arrived here in Ohio, and it's time to get working. I suppose you have some games. Hey guys, welcome back to Classic G-Body Garage. It is a warm April day. Here the grass is greening up. The leaves are not yet on the trees, but you can still see a few buds starting to come through. And it is warm enough to get outside here and finally start working on a couple of things. I figure I'd give you guys a quick update, show you what's going on, what I have in store, and uh, you know, just things that keep checking back here on my channel, keep you guys entertained. Got the 78 Cutlass Calais T-Top, has been sitting here since, I wanna say October of last year. That's probably a good six, seven months. Just backed it in here and parked it. I did do a video on this car of pulling the door panels off because there are some things going on with the linkage inside the doors and uh, the door handles, inner door handles need replacing. So I'm going to go ahead and do a how-to on how to replace the latch on the door and as well as the door handles themselves. Uh, of course we got the 83 Silverado here, the 84 Silverado up there, going to be working on those. Here is the latest edition, 80 Cutlass Supreme Brome Diesel. This car here has been here forever. Uh, 79 Cutlass Supreme T-Top. The guy has been uh, saying he's gonna come get this for uh, over a year now, I believe. Hopefully he'll come get it someday. Uh, 78 Cutlass Calais four-speed moonroof. This car has been sitting here a couple years, unfortunately. Plan this year is to get it going, get it driving, get a carb on it. It has no carburetor on it now. Uh, barn find, years and years and years ago. Uh, I had it running for a day. Did not run very good. Had a pile of shit holly on it. Uh, took that thing off, and that's kind of where it stopped. Uh, 80 Cutlass Supreme Brome Diesel. Yeah, like I said, I just got this car. Uh, have yet to do a video on this guy, on this one, to uh, let you know what the plans are for this car. 80 Cutlass Calais T-Top. This has a 260 in it, which is going to come out. Got a 403 or a 350, something for it. Uh, I want to get this car going. Moving under its own power as well. It's getting windy out here. And of course, I want to get the motor out of this uh, 83 Silverado. Get it in the 84 Silverado sitting there I've been saying that for years I know guys I know guys everyone who's been keeping up with my channel has been wanting me to work on these trucks this will be the year because I'm tired of not having a truck 78 Cutlass Calais four speed got this one uh, October or November 2014 uh, has just been sitting here ever since and uh, I did do a video on this car uh, basically showing that the motor is not froze which I originally thought it was uh, so maybe, who knows, maybe I'll see if I can get this thing fired up this year. It does have some issues. And what I have decided to work on today is the 97 Ford Ranger. And got getting the interior pulled out of this thing. Last video on this truck, I showed you guys how I pulled all of the carpet out of it, or at least what was uh, someone considered carpet. It was basically just black felt. Pulled the rear panels out and I found something cool back behind there a little bit of surprise pulled out the racing bucket seats that were in here so the carpet's gone as you can see I had a set of Explorer seats that I pulled out of an Explorer a couple of years ago in a junkyard with the seat tracks they were power seat tracks and I got uh, the correct Ford Ranger seat tracks bolted them in and just kind of have the seat sitting in there for now just to make sure everything fits because they are Explorer seats with Ranger seat tracks. Uh, I don't believe these seats were an option on these trucks, only in Explorers, but they do sit in here nicely. All the bolt holes line up, uh, but they're not tight. They're just kind of sitting in here. And also this is a uh, homemade center console, and I wanted to make sure that these seats fit in here with this center console. And underneath this console, there are two uh, six or eight inch subwoofers down underneath there so that's kind of cool and you can see the amp behind there so got the seats in here got rid of those nasty ugly blue and silver racing bucket seats that it felt like I was sitting on a brick 
and plus you, your head was practically hitting the ceiling they were so damn high in here so I also ugh, let me get inside of here and these seats are nice and comfortable too it had these ugly visors you know the people who had this truck before me they painted everything blue blue they had this piece was blue this was blue so when I got the seats from the junkyard I went ahead and got the vent and this uh, delete piece here uh, correct gray color cleaned them up and snapped them into place I'm gonna repaint that back to black or get another another one of these uh, just to get rid of all that nasty blue I have brand new carpet coming for it gray and before I put the carpet down I'm gonna put uh, some dynamat down uh, some seal some things up I'll put a, a metal plate over top of this hole here you can see where the factory shifter was probably up here they move things back for the uh, five-speed from the Mustang so I will put a metal plate there put some dynamat down seal it all up make it nice and quiet in here and get these seats bolted down where they should be and also get some side seat covers here as well so I'll show you guys what I found back here I thought the seat belts were out going out of this truck but someone when they uh, pulled those side panels off carpeted them I found the seat belts the original seat belts stuffed back behind them so that was a nice surprise however there is a piece that's missing the slide adjustable piece for the shoulder belt so I have to go to a, back to the junkyard and get that so I did get some seat belts from the junkyard the lower belts just like you saw that's in there so I guess I don't need these anymore and also the original Ranger uh, female pieces that go down on the floor there uh, I was unable to get those out of the floor of the trucks and the junkyard just because it, the bolts are so rusted. So what I'm going to do is take a set of G-body bucket seat belts, as you see here. They fit into the uh, Ranger seat belt, even though it says GM. Here's an original piece out of the Explorer that will not work in the Ranger, but I just grabbed it just in case I needed it. But you can see the similarity between the uh, General Motors piece and the uh, Ford piece. Same exact thing. So what I'll do is I'll just bolt these into the floor of the Ranger. I'll take a heat gun, shape the plastic where it needs to be so it'll fit up real nice right there. So there you go guys. That's the latest. I just wanted to get moving on this truck, get the interior back together, and get it on the road. Uh, get rid of all the nasty, ugly blue. I'm going to pop these out of here, paint those black like they should be, or I just actually I just go to the junkyard and get pieces. I don't even need to paint them. So there you go. So that is the latest kind of a, a highlight on what I have going on this year for you guys and the latest on the 97 Ranger. Getting that interior back together, getting the truck back together, and back in the road. So keep in touch, guys, and as far as... Uh, keeping up with all the videos leave those comments keep subscribing until the next classic g-body garage video keep those g-bodies rolling